Five months after Washington State quarterback Tyler Holinsky took his own life, his family says an autopsy of their son's brain shows evidence of CTE. That is a degenerative brain disease often found in athletes and veterans. One of the things that makes the disease so difficult to understand is that it can't be diagnosed until after death. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley spoke with Tyler's parents about their loss, this new revelation, and the role football may have played in their son's death. Mark and Kim Holinsky, the parents of Tyler Holinsky, told me this afternoon that football has been a major part of their family for generations, like it's in their DNA. So as you can imagine, it was difficult for their family to learn Tyler had CTE. They shared with me their reaction when they got the news. I remember I was by myself. I opened the letter because I, I needed to know that. And it was an absolute, it was a shock. We had already been through the shock of losing him knowing that he had CTE and that, that maybe the game that we all loved and he loved the most um, was part of that was really difficult to, to accept. They say they tried to expose their three sons to all different types of sports, but they always ended up gravitating to football. In fact, their youngest son, Ryan, is 17 and still plays football. I asked Mark and Kim if they still support that after learning about Tyler having CTE. If he were 10, very easy decision, but it's his decision now. So that really what all we could do is educate him, educate ourselves, and support his decision. Knowing what you know now, do you blame football for Tyler's death? Do I blame uh, football? I don't. If, if Tyler had died on the field of you know severe injury, um, I wouldn't blame football because that was part of the risk in playing the sport. If we had something that we could take our anger and frustration and sadness out, football would be a very easy target. Um, and it might make us feel better for a little bit, but I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the proper response. So now instead of focusing on blame, the Holinsky family tells me they plan to continue their efforts to destigmatize mental illness through the Holinsky's Hope Foundation. And you can find more information about Holinsky's Hope by visiting creme.com. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. And while we dive deeper into this story, we want to hear from you. Knowing studies show a link to CTE, would you still play football or encourage your children to play football? So go to creme.com vote or hit the vote now tab on your Krem2 mobile app and let us know what you think. All right, we are joined now by sports director Darnay Tripp to talk more about this diagnosis. Yeah, Tyler's diagnosis which stage one CTE, so it was on the low end of the scale, but doctors told the Holinskys that their son had the brain of a 65-year-old, which was obviously very hard for them to take. Kim told the Today Show there weren't any verbal signs to WSU or to the family that anything was wrong, but there were subtle changes in behavior as detailed in the Sports Illustrated piece, being less responsive to calls and texts. Kim even texted her son at one point asking if something was wrong. Mark said, quote, the reality is we missed it and we let him down. The slight changes in behavior began after WSU's loss to Arizona, where Helensky played the majority of the game that the Cougs ultimately lost. He told his brother Kelly that one particular hit in that game, quote, rocked him, and he struggled to cope with the loss, feeling like he let the team down. In light of today's revelation, I reached out to WSU for their reaction to the news. They sent a statement stating in part that mental health and suicide prevention has been a priority at Washington State University for a number of years. WSU has and will continue to follow best practices from the NCAA as they relate to mental health and suicide prevention, as well as continue to consult with leading and industry experts. The university had resources available to student athletes prior to Holinsky's death and has added to those resources since. They also have events planned to raise awareness in the coming year, which includes an invite to Tyler's family to raise the Cougar flag before their home opener against San Jose State, which takes place during Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. You can find the complete statement right now on creme.com. Now, one detail worth noting is that the school statement does not make any reference to CTE. I reached out to a school spokesperson on why the brain disease was not mentioned. They replied saying in part, there is still much for researchers to learn about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and this is an area of active investigation by experts across the country. A scientific understanding of the condition advances, Washington State University will continue to follow best practices established by the NCAA for concussion diagnosis and management for all its student athletes. Meantime, the Mayo Clinic's discovery of CTE in Tyler Halinski's brain fuels the efforts of the foundation his family started, the Halinski Hope. 
Their goal is to generate funds and awareness for schools in order to provide more mental health and suicide prevention resources while aiming to erase the stigma surrounding those topics. CTE didn't even have an official name until about 15 years ago, so we still have a lot to learn about it. Krem 2's health reporter Rose Belts has more on CTE and its association with depression. What so many people are wrestling with when people make the decision to take their own lives is how could they do that to their children? How could they leave their children behind? Is that the wrong question for us to ask? A absolutely. You are not, you are not in any way thinking that way. Um, what are you thinking? In my mind and in my case. So that was not the correct story, mm -hmm. but I understand we do have the correct story lined up with Rose Belts talking about CTE and here's that. The Holinsky family has been open about their search for answers. According to them, the Mayo Clinic doctors were also curious and requested to do an autopsy of Tyler's brain. The family says the results indicated that their son had signs of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, known as CTE, a degenerative brain condition many scientists say is caused by head trauma. It has been found in athletes, military veterans, victims of domestic abuse, and others with a history of repetitive brain trauma. In CTE, a protein called tau forms clumps that slowly spread throughout the brain, killing brain cells. The disease has been seen in people as young as 17, but early symptoms usually appear in patients in their late 20s or 30s. It could be years after the onset of head impacts. Some common changes seen include memory loss, confusion, dementia, impulse control problems, aggression, depression, and paranoia. Symptoms get more severe with age, even if the patient suffers no additional head impacts. CTE was first introduced in 1928 when doctors described a group of boxers as having punch drunk syndrome. A 2017 study published in the medical journal of JAMA found CTE in 99% of deceased NFL players' brains that were donated to scientific research. Studies sponsored by the Brain Health Institute for Athletes at the University of Texas at Dallas point to changes and noticeable abnormalities to the brain's white matter after suffering a concussion. You can think of the white matter as the subway of the brain. It's the cumulative mass of insulated nerve fibers that connect one neuron to another. Normally, signals are passed along these fibers at high speeds, but after a concussion, when the brain is rattled inside the skull, some of these connections can stretch or tear. This has helped researchers identify the potential link between concussions and depression. Neurologists say it's worth considering because the mood disorder can lead to suicide if they're not treated. This was the case with linebacker Junior Seau, who played in the NFL for 20 seasons and took his own life in 2012. His autopsy report revealed signs of CTE. Although the disease cannot be formally diagnosed until after death, specialists say symptoms of CTE that may be experienced during a lifetime, such as depression or anxiety, are manageable. This is why it's important for someone experiencing these symptoms to have an evaluation by a neurologist and work with them to figure out a treatment plan. Rose Belts, Crime 2 News. And just last summer, the Spokane Youth Sports Association ended its tackle football league. The executive director tells us they didn't have enough kids sign up for tackle football and enrollment was on the decline for years. They do still have flag football for all age levels. So we asked you, knowing there is a link between CTE, would you still play football or encourage your children to play football? So right now, about 31% of you are saying yes, 69% are saying no, you would not allow your kids to play football. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, we've been watching this poll actually bounce yeah. around. At right. one point it was 50-50. Um, so I think people are really conflicted with the science, right, yeah. and the absolute love of America's football. Oh my goodness, and the Holinskis yeah. are a prime example of that because right. Tyler's younger brother, Ryan, is going to the University of South Carolina, highly touted high school football player. And, you know, they ultimately left the decision up to him whether or not he would continue playing. And he has a love and a passion for the sport and wants to kind of continue Tyler's legacy. It's so ingrained in our culture and our mm -hmm. society, certainly in sports that it's hard to kind of cast a negative light or kind of cast it aside, mm -hmm. but it's also hard to 
ignore the findings and the right. research and the information. I, I think getting rid of tackle football for those young ages, youth, is a no-brainer. Right. right. I mean, I think that's a logical step to take. Um, but you can't help but wonder how many more people are going to say, I'm just not going to bother with it at all. Yeah, it's a conversation we're having. I grew mm -hmm. up playing football in high school and in yeah. college. I have a five-year-old son, and my wife is already like, he is not playing football. Yeah. So it's a conversation we're already having mm -hmm. about this. So. Yeah, and we'll learn more as, as more focus. It's all, all this information is relatively new. I mean, the first uh -huh. NFL player to be diagnosed with CTE was 2005. I mean, right. that's not that long ago, and that yeah. study that said 99% of 111 was uh, just a year ago. Right. So yeah. it's all very, very fresh, and there's mm -hmm. lots of information that we're still going to gather. Indeed. Darn, I thank you very much.